Next, please. So you can understand what the energies are about. Next, please. Oh, oh no, before that, no, no. Okay. So, the, a very important part of opening up ion channels is that the research that was done in 2008 from John Hopkins University in um, uh, near Washington, D.C. They found that blocking potassium channels in stem cells slows their growth and differentiation. So you can utilize this technology with any stem cells that you may want to inject, if that is your preference. Although you can do it without injection, but if some people prefer the injection. So what they found is that when you block potassium channels, these cells um, turn into cancer cells, turn into tumor cells. So that is uh, a very important reason why you want these ion channels to be flexible. Next, please. So, so potassium channels and stem cell differentiation. Let's, let's make a difference between stem cell proliferation, which means more cells, and stem cell differentiation. So a lot of research has shown that as, as you're aging, you actually have more cells. You don't have less cells, you have more cells, but you have less differentiated cells. What that means, what's a differentiated cell? A cell can just sit there and do nothing, or it can become skin, or nose, or eye, you, that's a differentiated cell. It can be liver, it can be kidney, or it can just sit there and be like um, a pile of, uh, you know, of, of, of uh, soil kind of thing that you gather there. Because it doesn't do anything. It's not differentiated. It's not useful. Only differentiated cells are useful to our body. That's why all the people form more cancers. Why? Because they actually have more cells but they have less cells that are differentiated, okay? So there is an importance that why you want to increase differentiation in, this, in, in all cells, including the stem cells. And that's one of these things that this, uh, that this device will do. It will enhance stem cell differentiation. Okay, next please. So how does uh, the AELUS repair proteins, uh, nonsense signals, turning them into meaningful signals? Okay, so this is basically an example of, of how, what a nonsense signal will look is underneath. So a nonsense, the alternating frequencies forming a bio language, right? And then a nonsense signal, because you lost certain aspects of the signal, is gonna say AR, bubble, whatever, only you don't know what this says. Right? That's a nonsense signal. So that is what, what I'm talking about. I spoke before about nonsense signals. This is what the nonsense signal does. So what the AUS will do is going to fill in these parts of the signal that are missing to make it coherent again. Are you with me? You understand now what your frequency is, right? OK, next, please. This is just another example. You can see one thing, one little thing can be wrong and you can have a whole malfunctioning protein. So the, the frequencies and filling in missing part of broken biological sequences is extremely, extremely important for the uh, body functioning. Next, please. Next. Okay, so this is uh, just some of the frequencies that uh, uh, have our record from different studies, what you need to realize is none of them, you see the range, doesn't mean anything. This range is, is extremely, extremely high. What you need to do is you need to find a resultant of all of these frequencies that you're gonna hit target. Otherwise, you're gonna have a frequency that does not hit target. It's just a range. Do you see what I mean? This is actually quite large. This is huge, 3,800 between 6,200. That is a huge uh, difference between 
in a huge range. Um, and of course, it gets less and less, but still, even this is quite big. So to make a signal, a proper signal, you have to comprise several signals together that will get that signal uh, to be to correspond to what the body is doing. Otherwise, if it doesn't correspond, then it's not good. It's just as good as nonsense. Next, please. So this is how the frequencies are built. Um, you basically uh, put, you see how many, many, this is like many, many different frequencies. You cannot see it, but um, this is several frequencies that are completely different from each other. Next, please. Uh, this is some more uh, oscilloscopic um, uh, uh, diagrams, basically, <coughs> that can show you how different frequencies. This is just one frequency, and yet this thousands of little frequencies together. Next, please. Okay, and this is the uh, communication board and how complex it is. Um, this is how, what communicates with what. This is some of the technological drawings of the Aelius. Next. And that's another technological, one of the technological drawings. As you can see, it's extremely complex. A lot of these components, you cannot see it with the naked eye. Um, Nobody can really put it together that easily. And if you do put it together, uh, then you don't know what the software are doing, you don't know what the programs are doing, so it's a very complex technology to communicate. Next, please. Uh, and then this is uh, some more of the certificates um, uh, of the uh, Aelius. Next. And um, this is how. Um, a lot of people ask, how does it do it, basically? And it does it through resonance. And what is resonance? Let me explain. Have you seen a boat crossing a lake and it creates a wave? And because the waves are similar, then they make a bigger wave and they make a bigger wave. So similar things, when they meet, they make a bigger thing. And the similar things, when they meet, they cancel each other out. So resonance is when these two that are similar meet and they make a bigger thing. And that is how basically this process works. It works through amplifying frequencies. It's communication frequencies. Next, please. Now, this is uh, some uh, uh, protein labeled with, uh, uh, this is just more kind of uh, uh, molecular biology and how different kind of uh, uh, <coughs> molecules uh, are transferred. This is an energy transfer. This is a uh, ATP donation and uh, how it goes from three to two points, three to two points. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna give you a little bit. Uh, it's a very complex uh, diagram, but basically it's how, how things are bind into the system. Next, please. And now I'm going to start with the before and afters. That's going to be something that you can all enjoy. You don't have to think. Now you can sit back and relax with all the uh, biochemical new concepts. And you can see some before and afters. This uh, is from uh, Dr. Sally in Mexico. This lady started her alias treatments three years ago. Next, please. And this is today, three years later. She did about 10 treatments per year. Next, please. This is uh, close to each other, so you can see it. Um, next. This is uh, actually only one treatment, and this is before the eye. As you can see, the wrinkles around the eyes, and as you can see, all the wrinkles are gone. Now, um, and also you can see a leaf. You see the cheeks are more there's a depression here on the cheeks. The cheeks are more higher on both sides. Now, this is two treatments. And this uh, person is younger. The younger the person, of course, uh, the faster it's going to work. The older the person, the more treatments they're going to need. Um, you have uh, a significant decrease in pigmentations, uh, skin lightening, uh, acne healing and you have significant effects on pain. 
So you can have the entire pain clinic, neuropathic pain, carpal tunnels, sciatic pain. All you need is the Aegeus and all that is going to be healing very, very fast. Actually, the next day, they're going to feel no pain. Next, please. This is a gentleman, uh, again, Caucasian, and you can see a lot of wrinkles on his side, a lot of wrinkles on his forehead. We actually did Dr. Yonkers' forehead, and we did see in one treatment quite a difference, and his neck. Um, this uh, gentleman had two treatments. It does make a difference, you know, obviously, if you have one treatment. It's not as good as if you have two treatments. If you have five treatments, it's going to be even better. So the more the better. You can do, uh, you can do it uh, every day. You can do it twice a week. You can do it three times a week. There's no pain. There's a lot of gain. Next, this is another lady, and uh, you can see this is only one treatment. Um, there is uh, some difference here. Obviously, she still has that. There is difference in the depression on her skin. There is some bleed. But notice the coloring is much brighter face. Uh, wrinkles have decreased significantly. Uh, these very, very deep wrinkles. But you see these are much closer together and they're deeper. Uh, this one are kind of more open because her face is more kind of um, lifted in that area. They're still there, of course, and she needs more treatments before she can get rid of this. Um, but um, there is a significant difference between the two. Next, please. Uh, this is again a before and after from Preciado. Primarily, you can see it in the eyes. Uh, this eye is even better than this one. You can see the eyelid has um, has uh, lifted, and this was the after was taken three months later, and she did have, I believe, seven treatments. Um, this patient. Next, please. This is um, a Dutch lady who came to our booth, and uh, she did two treatments on two consecutive days. Um, well, one on one side and one on the other side. Um, so it was really one treatment for the entire face, but uh, and she had quite fantastic results. So she put us on television in Netherlands because she was uh, so pleased with her results. Next one, please. Uh, this is uh, you cannot see this very well. You probably see that on the computer. But this lady has I don't know if you can see these bumps here. She had a lot of these bumps and. There aren't too many things that you can do for these bumps. Actually, there is a lot of people that do lasers to get these bumps under the skin. And the reason is because there's too much excessive collagen that stays there, so it creates the bumps. Uh, and uh, there was a significant kind of ironing out of these bumps after uh, two AU treatments. Next, please. Uh, this is uh, the actually this is the famous singer that I was uh, talking to you about. This is her before, and this is after. And she had three IUs uh, treatments. She's a famous Hong Kong singer, and Chinese singer, and she just had a concert in Hong Kong. So she came, um, I did this myself. And uh, she um, she gave us a bunch of this testimonials. She put her, her logo on her, on her concert. She was just, uh, She's very appreciative. She loves the technology. Um, so we became friends. She comes to my house, so she wants to use my machine, of course. So, uh, but you can see the difference on her face. She's fairly young, she's 45 years old, but still, for somebody who's on stage, it makes a huge difference. Do you this or she's this? Next, please. Okay, so why is IELUS necessary to use after lasers and radio frequency? It reduces inflammation, number one. Okay, reduces post inflammation that may cause pigmentations increase after several years. And uh, after certain laser or radio frequency treatments, you might have an increase of uh, post inflammation. And it also repairs protein signals. We already spoke about that. 
and they enhances their repair mechanisms. And we talk about how the, you know, the chaperones and so on and so forth. Don't fall asleep on me, please. Okay, next, please. Next. Everybody fell asleep. <laughs> okay, so what happens during uh, laser radio frequency plus IAUs? So you have the laser, you have the trauma, the body signals are repair mechanisms to initiate actions, okay? So this is what happens with the laser, okay? So the, the, the body says, now you're gonna have to concentrate here. And so what you have really with the laser treatments, but you do that with the aileos without the trauma. Everything that you can do with the laser, you can do with the aileos but without the trauma. Of course, if you have the two together, what happens is because you have created the urgency, that urgency gathers all these signals in that area, and then it's much easier for Aelius to repair those signals. So you have, what do you have? You don't, maybe you don't know that, but this is what happens after lasers and radio frequency. That's what the body does to repair the trauma. It does increase collagen and elastin and other related proteins, increases uh, the J and K pathway signaling and other signaling because that's going to increase to send the message out. Uh, it increases perimodern epithelium cells to mitigate towards the signaling to heal the trauma. Red blood cells carrying nutrients and oxygen increases proliferation so they can kind of close the wound, uh, increases differentiation, not always. Differentiation, it does not increase. You see, that is something that the aileus will do, but the lasers will not gonna do, because there is no nothing to increase different, to increase the proliferation to do the wound, the, uh, to close the trauma, but differentiation is not necessarily going to be enhanced. So you're gonna have some essential functions that the aileus will do that you cannot have it. The laser treatments, it repairs defective Nancy's protein signals, and balances out inflammatory and anti-inflammatory processes. Now this part, the uh, repair of the protein signals and the increased differentiation, this too is what thickens the skin that we said, that is the only technology that thickens the skin under the eyes and uh, lifts the, uh, the drooping eyebrow and uh, eyelid. The, that the reason is because it increases skin tissue exactly by these two processes. Next please. Uh, this is uh, just some of the uh, proteins, so just another biochemistry part. Um, so DDR1 uh, does not increase proliferation, but DDR2 does. And then you have this uh, A1B1 protein, A2B1 protein, that also increase proliferation, but these ones are questionable. And then adhesion is increased with all of them, but not DDR2. So, Different proteins and different collagen synthesis depends on specific proteins. So it's a lot, a lot more complicated than saying, oh yeah, just in, just increase collagen. It's, it's everything is signaling. Okay, next please. So advantages of using the AUS after a laser radio frequency is that uh, basically you have already triggered the repair mechanisms. 40% of these repair mechanisms will be dealing with the trauma. The remaining 60% are used for rejuvenation. Then the signaling will amplify the signals of the repair mechanisms. And because you have concentrated them, it's gonna be far more effective. And the synergy between laser and radio frequency is going to give you a much higher effectiveness in your anti-aging process. Next, please. And this is a lady that did laser, ultrasound, and then that's after when the aileus was added to it. As you can see, the skin tone is much better. There's, of course, a lift in the ultrasound is not gonna lift. Um, and there is an improvement in the eyes. As you can see, the eyes look much, much better than here. And it's also much lifted. Next, please. And this is at the side, and again, you see, look at the eye here, and look at her eye, how much, I mean, still, it's just one treatment, but still, 
uh, you can see a significant difference. When you add the aileus after the radio frequency, there is a difference here, you can see the quality of the skin is much better, and this line and this line is much reduced. And of course, there is a lift. You see that depression here, and there is a bit of a lift. Because why? Because there was increased tissue, and therefore it looks plumper, it looks fresher. She looks younger than she looks here. Next, please. Okay, that is uh, a lady that did laser on her pigment, and then we added the IEUs, and as you can see, look at this, is still quite dark, and this one is much lighter, significantly lighter. We just did one side of this person. Of course, he looks uh, uh, lifted, the eye looks better, uh, the eyebrow is higher, so this, uh, the, there was a, uh, a significant improvement. Next please. Uh, that is the side as you can see some of these little wounds that the laser caused was uh, all kind of healed and there is you cannot see it here but I mean if you saw it on the mirror you would see that her skin looked significantly lighter after the alias treatment and it's just the combination that made it look like that actually the synergy. Next please. Uh, this is uh, somebody that had laser, and as you can see, look at the significant healing of all of these wounds. As you can see here, there's a significant, significant healing. Actually, I invite you to see this on the computer. It looks much more pronounced, but you can see it over here as well. Over here, and over here. Over there, and over here. Significant difference. Next, please. And uh, there is also a number of um, studies on psoriasis, diabetic chronic wounds, and accident acute wounds with the aliens. Next. This is the same, the star, actually. That's the, uh, the singer. And uh, she also had eczema. You cannot see it very well. But um, again, if you saw it in the computer, this looks really, really bad. And then a week later, after one treatment, it uh, looked uh, much, much better. Next, please. I, oh, actually, this is a week later. We did one, we did one treatment, and this was a week later. And that was the before again. And uh, a week later, it was almost gone completely. After that treatment, it just started healing by itself. Next, please. She, she had that uh, psoriasis. She had that... Uh, um, months and months and months, it wasn't getting any better. Uh, this is um, chronic psoriasis, and as you can see, that's 10 treatments, um, before and after, and that's from Singapore. Next. Uh, that's uh, somebody's arm, again, the, a significant improvement after 10 treatments. Next. And this is a traffic accident. This person was told that he will never grow nails, and if you see this part is to the bone. So this so that he will never be able to, to gain or build motility. He actually grew nails and he, um, you know, he, his hand appeared to be completely normal after 15 treatments. Uh, this is somebody that was working for us. So this is the style that we did. Next, please. This is uh, very interesting. This is a diabetic wound. And this is after six treatments, and this is a year later. There was no reoccurrence of the wound, and there was complete healing. Diabetic wounds, as you probably know, do not heal. They just stay open like this. So that's another study that we did in Aruba. And this concludes, thank you. Can you, one last one? Thank you very much. That concludes the lecture. Um, I hope I did not burden you too much with two crazy concepts that um, you can ask all the questions you like. I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, do you have any questions? Yes. Thank you. Finally, a question. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, my name is Opa from Surabaya. 
Uh, I want to ask you about uh, three questions. <coughs> uh, the first one is the uh, the treatment that I I I use treatment is the a combined treatment with laser and RF or is a substitution. No, no, no. You can do it by itself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll just do it by itself. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that you can combine it. If you want, if you're so attached to the brain and you want to have that something you want to have, then you can combine it with the brain. But you can certainly do that something. There's no reason why. Uh, if I combine with laser, uh, can uh, the two treatment done in a same session? That's right. In a same session? One after the other. One? One after the other. So you do first the laser, protein uh, change the, the worst image protein the, uh, the aggregated one mm -hmm. to the well folding one okay. yes that's what it does what sharper proteins do the fault proteins like your like your Proteins unfolded, then it doesn't, uh, you cannot, it's useless. Okay? So, what the chaperone will do is gonna go there, it's gonna start folding it again. So, we call it denatured when it gets unfolded, and we call it renatured, renatured when it's folded again. Basically. So, that's the job of the, pro of the chaperones. It's an extremely, extremely important job because. The proteins is like the brain of the cell, and they have to be folded or they're useless. So the shoppers is what does the folding. It's a lot more than folded clothes. I mean, you know, you can wear priest clothes, but you cannot use proteins that are aggregated. Okay, uh, the last one, uh, the interesting things about the diabetic one. Uh, the healing. I see that uh, the healing is quite well. And uh, how is the glucose? Is that fluctuating or is it stable? I, I need to, I'm need i gonna get you in touch with this doctor from Aruba and she can give you the entire protocol. I don't have that information. But um, I will give you her phone number. I actually have it on my phone. And you can call it Aruba, so it's probably uh, it's like twelve hours difference, like that. So you know, like around uh, eight p.m. Your time is going to be by uh, time. So you can call her. Um, I will email her to prepare her, and I will introduce it to her. She can give you all the information. So to that dog, she actually has done a lot of the studies. She has a lot of the meditations. Um, not everybody's going to give us their pictures, so we have limited, you know, library. But she has, she has an iPad, and it's like full of these pictures. I mean, you know, it's, so she has, she is an expert in that, and she uses the Lalo, so she does research right now with Lalo and other ones. So she will give a lot of information if you're interested. In that. My name is Elita. I want to ask you about the concept because I see that it's quite uh, interesting. Yeah? It's very scientific about opening the channel. I want to ask uh, is about the differences with, uh, from this with the concept of the iontophoresis because I'm also uh, familiar with that uh, terminology, but I don't know what is the difference with the use. Yeah, I, I am, I am the 
force uh, pantophoresis is slightly different. It really has to do with, um, I guess, electrons carrying in the, uh, the product. But nobody knows why or how it's been carried in. Uh, here, what you say is, okay, I want to be specific. I want to make sure that every single molecule is going to be carried through. Because if you have a signal, you cannot have a hit and miss, right? Because it's like it's like having a cell phone. You want that cell phone to transmit the entire conversation because if, if only half of what you're saying is being transferred, there's no communication. So what this does, it basically specifically uses energies that will open the ion channels. So isotheresis can happen of course. Uh, my guess is that some of it happens to ion channels, but it's a hit or miss, you see. It's not a specific science. Um, here you say, okay, I'm going to have certain energies that no matter what I do, they will open these ion gates. And at all points, when I want to pass the signals, the seconds will go through. So that is, the trick is that it's far more specific. It's far more scientific if you want to say, you know, it's, it's more, it's, it's exact, it's more exact, but nothing is exact, but it's more, it's, it's, it's significantly more exact than antiphoresis. Antiphoresis is like, Look at, you know, 
what is cancer related to? The JNK uh, pathway is related to cancer. When you block that pathway, you have an increased uh, incidence of cancer, right? Like the P53 gene, uh, that causes not just, causes apoptosis, I mean, it stops all, all um, um, it, it stops all migration of cells, all um, different, uh, proliferation of cells. There's no mitosis at all, it stops everything. It stops cancers, but it stops also the normal cells. But you can turn it on and off with signaling. I'm not saying that we have this signal in there either, because we do not. But this is all part of the signaling process. So eventually, this technology could be used in that route. But we're gonna need more research, we're gonna need, you know, so it's not like you can take this into a cancer if you want. But I don't think it would be a contraindication because it would be towards the direction of helping rather than not helping. So conceptually, if you think about it as a concept, yeah, I'd like a frequency with the natural progress. Yes, of course, it's not, you don't wanna have somebody who has a predisposition to cancer because then they might get cancer. If you do not more projects, most of us can handle these errors. With a healthy body can handle errors. Otherwise, we would be all the same tomorrow. You know, so we handle errors, we can get rid of bad cells, we can recreate cells, and that's very bad mechanism. But so the answer is it will probably help, but we don't know the answer to the question. But it will not be Contraindications, we still say pacemaker, although we never tried it, and we're not gonna try it because you don't wanna risk it. Um, it's signaling, pacemaker is signaling, it basically gives signals to the pacemaker cells. This gives signals to the proteins. With that signal, conflict with the pacemaker set signal and create a problem we don't know. We haven't tried the monogamy. And of course we say pregnant women because we don't want to do anything with pregnant women just in case. They lose the baby and it's okay. Also lactation, pregnancy and lactation? Yeah, not, not a thing's gonna affect lactation, but it's not gonna really do anything with the pregnant women, but we don't want any side effects. We don't want anything. We don't want them to get nervous. Basically, play you for it. So, no pregnant women, nothing to do with bringing another life in the end of course basement. But all of these technologies, that's what basically is saying. Well, Pardon? Yeah. Somebody said something? Yeah, some, someone from the back. Okay. okay, so the second, uh, the second question has to do with stem cells. How does it help stem cells? The uh, number one way is because you don't need needles to administer them. Okay, it opens the animal channels. So you can pass stem cell extracts in. Not stem cells, stem cell extracts. That's much smaller than stem cells, right? The proteins. Now, how it would help stem cells if you just did an injection of stem cells? Would that help? Well, what happens is that stem cells need to be differentiated, or they're gonna be useless. They can create tumors, but not differentiate. And we're talking about primary embryonic stem cells that will become tumors. The other ones that want because they're adult, they know what they're doing, they're more kind of the more knowledge, they're not the embryonic are very dangerous because of, of this kind of but they have the best the best stem cells too to you know for you know the, the most effective ones because they they live the longest and, and they are far more than anything else. But they're very dangerous. The greatest danger, and that's what the Hopkins University researches about, the greatest danger is that the stem cells only have potassium channels. So if those potassium ion channels are low, then they have nothing. And because there is a, a possibility that these channels will get blocked, okay, 
Now, what the Aelians will do is will unblock the chance, because that's what it does, it opens the gates. So it will help some of these stem cells to differentiate that would have otherwise have been damaged. So in that sense, it will help stem cells to differentiate and exist versus, you know, just doing the injection and leaving it to lung. So if you did the injection and use the age, you would see a much more pronounced effect in stem cells because less of them would die. There would be a greater survival rate and a greater kind of uh, distribution rate. And they would differentiate much better because you would not have the danger of ion channels being blocked. So you understand what I'm saying? So if we can ideas, we can we can use another solution except stem cells. Is it what do you mean? You can use no and you can use stem cells, you can use another you can use any solution you want. If you use stem cells, okay, what well you can use extra or you can use actual stem cells. The, the stem cells you're gonna have to inject. You cannot just put them on top. You can use the extracts and they can be absorbed through the iron channels. The stem cells are not going to be absorbed through the iron channels. Okay? So the stem cells you're going to have to inject. If you're injecting stem cells, you have to inject them. Those, the, there is a problem with the stem cells that we inject. The problem is that all cells have channels. They have gates that we call iron channels. The stem cells only have potassium iron channels. So if that's blocked, they got nothing. It, it's like a house with no doors, no windows, no entry, no exit, or a body that cannot excrete and cannot receive. It would die. So the aelios will unblock these channels and will help a lot of these cells to survive. So if you do stem cells and you do your the aelios, you will have a much better differentiation of stem cells than if you did not do the aliens. Is that clear? But you can do other substances. You can do anything. I mean, you can put other substances in. There's going to be a higher absorption. It's going to be treated as a nutrient in that case. Any more questions? One more question. Yes. Uh, so about psoriasis, uh, ideas can help psoriasis. Uh, can it also help for other dermatitis? Like we, we have found many patients with uh, sensitive skins and then they have atopic dermatitis. Can it help? It, it usually helps with all inflammatory conditions. Um, we have seen a lot of um, <coughs> I mean, I have personally dealt with a lot of dogs that have the ideas that are treating certain dermatological conditions. I'm not sure exactly what you are referring to and if it would help that particular one. It seems to be helping no, dermatological be conditions that are based on inflammation quite a lot. It's significant. So, um, again, I don't want to say that it will completely it might be, like for example, it will not kill bacteria. So if a dermatological condition is based on bacteria, it will work on the inflammatory part and the sweaty part, but it's not going to help on the killing the bacteria. So it will be a limited, you know, it will, it will help, but it might not completely heal. It depends on what it is, you know. Um, you just need to understand the technology the way it's basically it works with the inflammatory inflammation. Um, it will balance out the inflammation. That's a significant part. But, I mean, uh, there's other things that you need, other technologies to deal with. It's not, it's not, a, it's not a magic thing. Not your photos. Uh, the psoriasis one, may I know? Is it I use with some solution or with stem cells? Nothing. It's it's just I use. That's very good. Good result. All of those trauma conditions were just I use, nothing else. 
The stem cells, we discovered them very, very recently. There is a lady, um, well, there is a doctor in France that has some uh, stem cell extracts that we used and we found to be, and I, I have them with me, I can use it. I used them Dr. Yonko before. Um, and you can see for yourself what you think. Um, I don't know, I found it to be very, very interesting. Um, you, you know, it's not like I know all the other solutions of stem cells, I don't. So, you know, maybe you know something a bit better. I don't, I mean, that's not my expertise. But I was very impressed because we utilize that and we utilize with the IELTS and it seems to have really great results. And, but we have not used it with wounds or anything like that. We used it with, um, I would have the lasers, but not any, uh, you know, like this. <coughs> oh, I used it with this lady, the, uh, the singer on the eczema. The eczema. I used some stem cells there that we so played on. It was really gone, and she was very, because she had a concert, you know, she wanted to, you know, she did not want to go to the concert and have these things, so, you know. It, Obviously, nobody can see it's so far away. People are very self-conscious, so she was ecstatic that it's that Thank you to the same Yes. Yeah. 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 